Hi, Scott. Hi, Grady. Great to connect with you guys. Good to be here. Great. Uh, I can't believe our schedule is finally aligned so we could talk. I know you guys, being two of the IBM's leading thought leaders around software, you guys spend a lot of time on the road traveling, so being here virtually, Second Life is probably like a day at hanging out on the beach for you both. And Grady, you may very well be at the beach. <laughs> Actually, it's minus five right now. I wish I oh, yeah, were at the beach. Too. Yeah, me too. I um, wanted to talk to you guys about a customer I've been working with. And they, like many, are increasingly challenged to deliver their software applications faster and cheaper and to do it while not sacrificing quality in so doing. This particular company has been developing software for years using a mainly waterfall approach. I know there are many ways to address the challenges there, but um, they've been talking about using an agile development methodology, and you know I wanted to educate myself on this methodology, and that's kind of why I wanted to meet with you guys today. Um, so what's the, the buzz all about around agile? Well, I think a lot of the a lot of, a lot of the buzz that we're hearing is around the greater discipline that agile brings to the table. Um, the more collaborative approaches and the, the more iterative and evolutionary approach to development is uh, leading to higher quality and greater stakeholder satisfaction in what's being delivered and also quicker time to value. So there's a lot of good stuff going on here. When you talk about your customer using uh, waterfall approaches, that brings to mind a number of possibilities. And probably what it means, without having spent direct time with them, is that they have a, a fairly... Uh, linear approach to developing software in which they'll, you know, analyze and then design and then implement. And that implies to me that their biggest challenge will be one of a cultural change because Agile really brings a more permeable mechanism among those phases. And furthermore, there are explicit means of feedback and loops. And that has a lot of change for not just the developers, but also the managers who follow what's happening here. Grace brought up a great point. Uh, the cultural change is absolutely critical to, to recognize, as well as the need for management to uh, change the, their approach to uh, governing and managing projects. I know they're worried about control and uh, losing control when they move to a smaller smaller teams. They feel like they'll just be doing cowboy coding and you know, not be responsible for their managers. Yeah, I think that the, the good news is that there's much greater opportunities for governance with Agile than there was with traditional. So, uh, but it does require greater accountability on the part of management. So the, there's uh, no easy trade-off here. No, it's right. greater intentionality. I mean, the managers can't just do a fire and forget on this. Exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, the other thing I want to talk about was that this customer has been a rational customer for years. Um, and they're under the impression that rational is is more does better around more traditional projects, more traditional methodologies, um, and that that they really can't do uh, move to an agile and support an agile paradigm. Oh, nothing could be further from the truth. Actually, um, we've got some really great product with uh, Jazz and some uh, really good stuff going on with Measure Capability Improvement Framework. So. I think we've done some, uh, made some real advances in agile development, uh, particularly in agile at scale as well as uh, disciplined agile approaches. And if you think about the core of what rational processes have been literally over the decades, it's a focus upon incremental iterative development, uh, delivering executable, testable executables, and with a focus on growing the architecture. These are very much in harmony with agile approaches. Great, great. Well, that's good to know. Um, so, so Scott, what are what are some of the other misconceptions about Agile that you've encountered in, in your travels? Well, as Greg was mentioning, uh, a lot of people seem to believe that there's a lack of architecture in Agile development, but nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, there's also a concern that we're not doing testing yet. The, you know, the reality is we're doing more testing and not less than the Agile community, which is you know where some of the the greater discipline comes in. Um, Agile definitely scales. Uh, IBM has delivered software to the marketplace with Agile teams of over 200 people, and we currently have Agile programs in place of five to 600 people. So um, there's a lot of good stuff going on there. Uh, we're also doing a lot of work with legacy systems. I think uh, almost all of our clients um, have a lot of legacy software out there that they want to leverage, and uh, Agile has some very sophisticated approaches to dealing with that, both on the application side of things as well as on the database side of things. 
And earlier, as I was mentioning, uh, Agile really is easier to govern than uh, traditional. And I think this is uh, one of the, the critical areas for a lot of organizations is they um, there is a push for improving governance. And I think Agile is uh, definitely something that they uh, should be taking seriously. I feel a little bit like Dr. Phil in saying this, but for those folks who are looking at Agile, or your customer in particular, and saying, I have all these great fears, you know, what I'd recommend to them is get to the core of what that fear is about. And in many cases, you'll find it's it's probably uncertainty of the unknown. They've never tried this before. And in that end, you know, mentoring can certainly help. And also the fear of loss of control. And as Scott pointed out, that's really truly a myth uh, that we'd like to bust here because there are opportunities for greater control and not just greater control but but better control over building the right things in the life cycle than one would have with the more traditional waterfall approaches. So as Dr. Phil would say, is it working for you? Well, I'd imagine what their life cycle, the waterfall life cycle now is doing is not working for them. And uh, for that reason, it's, it's very reasonable they begin to look at these agile approaches. Yeah, exactly. I couldn't have said that better myself. Well, Dr. Phil said it first. <laughs> so uh, what, what, what types of customers are most successful? I mean, you, you mentioned that large-scale large, large scale operations like uh, IBM, and you've mentioned some customers that are larger than 200. Or 200. Um, you know, most people think that Agile works better in small shops. Um, is, is this true also? Yeah, well, Agile definitely works uh, good in small shops, and uh, I, I think uh, one of our primary experiences has been that Agile has to be flexible and depending on your situation. So, you know, if, you know, you're going to manage a, a small team in a different manner than you will a large team. You'll manage a, a team that's in a regulatory environment differently than in a non-regulatory environment. Um, a team that's distributed will work differently than a team that's not distributed. So. Um, you know, you can apply Agile in all these situations, but your approach is going to going to differ depending on the complexities that your team faces. So um, we are seeing that. We're also seeing uh, Agile being done in the financial in industry, in manufacturing, in telecommunications, in the government, um, and in a range of uh, domains. So I think this is a, this is a, a good thing to be seeing now. Um, Agile really is being being adopted across the board within the IT industry. Agreed. Well, well, thanks for the insight, guys. I, I, you know, I know we all have places to be, and uh, you know, but I'd really like to get together with you guys again and you know talk about this in more detail. You know, maybe talk next about the architecture piece, and you know, maybe you can share some more stories, Grady, about you know some of the things you've seen around um, architecture and in an agile methodology, and uh, maybe we can talk more about the myths later. But um, I'd really appreciate you guys' time and getting together with me today. So let's talk sure. a little bit more about this. Same time, same place. Absolutely, be a blast. I'll I'll, I'll buy the coffee next time. Okay, guys. <laughs> Excellent. All right. That's pretty expensive in London dollars. So hey. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to find out about upcoming UK events and some of the topics discussed, visit ibm.com/itsolutions/uk/agile-events.